Mr. Math here, thanks for watching my videos. Be sure to like and subscribe and remember to click the bell icon to be notified of updates. Hello again viewers, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And let's see... There is a Yiga encampment over there. I sure wish I could bring this guy. You know, I guess I could do this. This is going to be kind of slow going, and look at all this gloom. Hmm. If only I had a wheeled ve vehicle. I could drive right across it. I could basically load this stuff on my car or whatever and just drive right on through. Hmm, what resources do I have? Well, I do have some wheels. Hmm. The main problem is that I would need to design something that where I can load up stuff like this in say uh, you know uh, like the bed of a pickup if I had a wheeled vehicle with that kind of setup Oh, look, there's some Bokoblins between me and my destination. everything. Oh. Where are the dazzle fruits? Well, that was no good. Corrigible sometimes.
Okay, I hope my air bike there. Yeah. Hope my air bike has not despawned. Wooden stick. Long stick. Okay. Alright, if I need it, I can make some more mining tools. Where's that you could camp? I kinda lost sight of it. Ah, there it is. Okay. You know, I've seen a lot of people online talking about how the depths are really frightening and intimidating and they're always scared to be down here. And I ought to feel exactly the same way. I really should, but I don't. And it's kind of weirding me out how completely unfazed I feel being down here. I really should be nervous and anxiety ridden being down in a dangerous place like this, and I'm not. And it's weirding me out when I stop to think about it, just how not anxious I am. Okay, I've got all the resources here. Hmm. I don't want my death cart to fall apart every single time I remove it from my uh, air bike. So... Now, when I shake that stick to loosen it, the two devices will just come right apart and they will still be in one piece what have we here anything in particular eh. got a hot air balloon and some fans flyer time bombs some rockets. And puff shrooms got those too. Anything over here? Here? No, not really. Okay. Oh, there's some pose over there. Wish I could have picked them up. Alright. Nearly at the destination. Oh, more bomb flowers. Always useful bomb flowers. So it looks like the Yiga guy I have to take out is that one on the ground over there.
Oh, wow. What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> that was really easy. Almost ridiculously easy. Let's go get my air bike. And my little joiner stick. What caused all those explosions though? I'm not too sure about that. Whoa! Oh man. Didn't get gloomed, but it was close. Was that arrow there? Okay. All right, let's check out their logs. On a previous intel assignment in Gerudo Town, I overheard an old legend passed down for generations. It begins, Under the side of the Arbiter, in the darkness of the subterranean depths, lies a great treasure. Obviously, when that kind of legend fails to yield any treasure for years, it tends to fade from public consciousness. So now that searches are few, and the subterranean depths beneath the Gerudo Desert are open to us, it would seem the perfect time for me to swoop in and secure that treasure, if not for the second part of the legend. Whosoever seeks his treasure must overcome their fear, as they will be met by a vortex of the wrath of the executed. I know that I must take this opportunity, but I can't muster the courage. Master Koga, grant me your bravery. Glory to Master Koga. A missing member returned to our base yesterday. They survived despite losing their light and transportation. We asked how they achieved this feat so we can better train recruits. It seems they were aided by strange stone statues. When they follow the statue's line of sight, they arrive safely at the closest abandoned mine. There are many stone statues in the depths, and we may never know how they are linked. Perhaps they once served as guideposts? No matter. We will inform members to follow them if they lose sight of the road. But take care not to get lost in the first place. A well-prepared member carries sufficient bright bloom seeds. Glory to Master Koga. Okay, I'm not a Yiga, but I do have tons of bright bloom seeds. Okay, so what we've got here are unicycles with lights and uh, various dangerous thing emitters, dangerous stuff emitters, flame emitters, and uh, I think that's a shock emitter. Hmm. Those explosions look like time bombs. Oh, control sticks. Huh. But anyway, as I was saying, those explosions looked like time bombs. So I rather suspect at this point that those guys with the flame emitter carts swooped in here and flamed the time bombs and then boom. That sounds like a likely explanation. Okay, that was the locked door right there. Do we have anything else worth raiding while we're here? Hmm. Let's see what's in these boxes. Decent supply of arrows.
<laughs> yeah, with my kill bot here, though, that battle was ridiculously easy. <laughs> no complaints there. Okay. Ooh. Yes. I needed that. A Yiga schematic. A scrawl schematic for a contraption made of Zonai devices, yada yada yada. Auto build. Okay, what's this? Vertical escape? A spring and two time bombs? Interesting. Alright, let's see. Anything else down here? Eh? Not really. Well, actually, I wonder what this is. Could possibly be another Yiga camp? It's a long way away, though. Hmm. Uh, I really, really do not want to abandon my death bot. He's been so useful. But moving further on from here is going to be tricky. Okay, what do I have left? I have plenty of homing carts and construct heads. But I only have one beam emitter left. Blast. Unfortunately, looks like I don't have too many more options. Yeah, I'd like to make for that place. See what it is. I guess I could just fast travel straight to the light route there. Hmm. Yeah, this... Getting in towards the labyrinth... Yeah, it's... That's starting to get mountainy and hilly. Seriously, though, it is weirding me out that I am not the least bit anxious to be down here. It's just another place to explore. <sighs> well, Killbot, you've been very useful, but unfortunately, carrying you further looks like a non-starter. <sighs> maybe, just maybe... <laughs> I can make a wheeled vehicle with a hauling bay or a pickup bed or you know whatever you want to call it. Maybe. If I can... some wheels up there but I don't see anything wide and flat that I could use as a pickup bed and they blew up this tree well waste not want not oh I don't get lumber from it 
I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. Those are... Looks like I can take these apart. Hmm. Maybe I could use these as a kind of hauling. Is there any... Uh, there's nothing over there. Yeah, no flat pieces of wood or metal or stone or anything. Okay, hold on. This right over here just might do the trick. This construction site over here. Because I believe there was some flat pieces of stone over there. I could use those, attach wheels to it, stick a control stick on it, and basically make a hauler. And then carry my flying machine around. My flying machine and death box. Okay, so. Alright. So, now. Now the main problem is that I can't attach these devices to my car. Because if I do, then when I turn my car on, then these will all turn on also and use up more of my battery and you know, who knows what else. I have that as the front. Is that... Oh no, it's backwards. Ugh. So good. All right, how's that look? That looks that looks fine so far. Okay. Now control stick. Okay, 
that should do it. This is going to be a really unwieldy contraption, but it should do the trick, I think. Oh, the Yiga devices are despawning. Huh. Well, no matter. Okay, so... And now... I might be asking for trouble, but... Looks a little bit too big. Move it more towards the back. Okay. And now. Might do the trick. Whoa, this travels a lot faster than it looks. This travels a lot faster than it looks like it should. Alright, though. That should do it, though. Yeah. Because I got two items on it that are not actually attached to the thing. Okay. Alright, it's fairly um, easy to control turns relatively agilely. And it successfully carries my devices. And it also, it turn, it has some agile turning speed. It stops pretty quickly too. anything despawning. Okay. Stick it on there. Phooey.
remember to push the B button to stop rather than the A button. Alright, I think that should do it. I hope that'll do it. And I would like to turn it sideways so that I could kind of tuck it behind the death bot. Um, what the heck? And I can't just ultra hand it over this gap because it doesn't like being ultra handed when there are <laughs> things stuck to it that aren't actually when things sitting on it that aren't actually stuck to it. Okay, so that seems to be good enough. Okay. Set down fairly sturdily. I don't want to attach it to the car. I want to attach it to the bike. Or, hey, that might actually do the trick. What? Rumble? What? I thought I heard, like, stall monsters coming out to get me. Guess not. Yeah, that's working. All right, we're heading west. More or less. Oh, little foxes. I want the big ones, I want the small ones. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the map and get a better idea of where we're headed. Okay, the car is currently pointed north. More or less. So, I just came from here. And I want to try going here. Oh, wow. 
wow, it doesn't like having all that stuff packed in the back. It really drifts. Electric monsters. Looks like a good place for my death bot, actually. Lots of electric monsters. Is that an electric Lizalfos too? Looks like it. Looks like his horn is zapping. Hmm. I got both of those keys really fast. I like this death bot. I like him a lot. Looks like there's another enemy nearby. Unfortunately, I ran out of battery. I don't want to get too far away from my other devices. Alright, so this uh, car basically worked exactly as I wanted it to. Though, again, it drifted really hard to the one side because of all the extra weight in the back. And there's another electric choo-choo over there, is there? I should be able to handle that. can take pictures of this. This 
really has been a good expedition down below. My little death bot has made raiding these camps a lot easier. Okay, time to get a move on. Now, let's see, we're going more or less that direction. And so... Fox noises. they all come from okay where's my death ball there he is let's gather up these pose while we're at it Do they have zonite deposits there? I can't tell from here. It looks like the kind of place where they normally would, but I don't see... Ah, uh, there's one. I was about to say, I don't see any mining going on. get distracted with what looks like very small pickings. Boy, this car actually goes pretty fast. Okay. 
got another enemy camp. All right, Deathbot. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, again? This is really getting on my nerves, my goodness. Kind of close. Ah, watch where you're firing that laser. What did I tell you about that laser, you dumb machine? Why was I suddenly crouching? What is that? Oh, it's an armor shard. Boy, this is... I mean, wow, that was... fast. Come on, don't uh, don't give me a hard time. Oh, more frocks. Right then. Okay. 
Okay, bombs. What are they rolling away for? Is this a downhill slope? It doesn't look like one. Whoa! That startled me. Fortunately, it didn't startle my death bot. Whew. Oh, there's another... Yeah, I just hope my death bot doesn't despawn. Yeah, that's definitely a Yiga encampment. Hmm. Pretty high up. Not sure my death bot will be useful there. Well, I'm not abandoning him, at least not yet. At more than 400 Poes. Yeah, so Poes and Zonite, that's what I want down here. And I'm getting lots of both. There's a light route over there. I've been to that one, haven't I? Yes, I have. And that might be a good place to start from to deal with the Yiga there. Let's see. I thought, ah, that's what I was looking for right here. about to say I thought I saw something and yes I did okay so I'll make for that light route and once I get there that will be my starting area for my Attack against the Yiga over there.
Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be something of a challenge. I can hear something. Why are... Why is my payload there? Shaking and making noises. Unfortunately, I don't think my death bot's going to be very useful. It's more for ground-based enemies, and that's not going to be a ground-based battle. My air bike, on the other hand, whoa. Um, the lightning dragon. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I don't think he's coming over here. Okay, can use my air bike to just go up and then use my height advantage to just rain death down on the Ega. And this guy... I guess I could take the beam emitter off and stick it on the bottom of my air bike and use that as my mode of attack. get it really close like so maybe it will still be here later in which case I can just sort of Just in case, I'll attach this, I said, I'll attach this guy to the car, so that way... Now. That's going to be difficult to get started. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I did not want to do that. I was trying to push B, not A. Blasted oversized thumbs. Fah. Oh, that was close. Can I just... No, apparently I have to have a level. I can just find some place where it won't fall. Stabilizer somewhere? <sighs> you know what? This just isn't working. Put that back together and leave it here and just hope that it doesn't despawn. was a pretty nice landing. Much better one than I had any right to expect. Ah. me from up here. You know what? I don't care. <laughs> so he had some kind of weapon there. Um, well, that's interesting. Well, let's see what their logbook says. Some of the huge roots growing from the ceiling have glowing cores. We have been using them as landmarks, but they may have an additional use, recovering vitality lost to the gloom. This light appears to have a mysterious healing effect that feels like being back on the surface. 
Unfortunately, the small amount of light is very weak. We are investigating whether the effect can be strengthened. If this research goes well, it may even be the end of carrying Sundalions. Glory to Master Koga. Yeah, just carry Sundalions anyway. Have two different... Uh, Two different ways to heal from the gloom. Oh, this is kind of an awkward spot. out to be easier than I had anticipated. I didn't anticipate very much challenge anyway. <laughs> okay. And I'll bet another schematic, yes. Let's see what we have for this one. Beam turret. Okay, same basic thing idea as my kill bot, except rather than the um, homing cart, it uses a stabilizer, which is, eh, I mean, useful if you just want to block a particular place off, but if you want something that can go around and actually target your enemies, then, yeah, I think my kill bot's better. That's the one hour mark. Is my car still down there? I can't tell. Nope. If it's not, I'm going to be annoyed. Not too surprised, but annoyed. Nope. There it is. It is still down here. Now the question is, where to go next? Of course, this episode is finished at this point, but eh, nice to have plans for the next one. Ah, come on, just get in there, will ya? There we go. Oh, right. I sealed it down. Didn't want to move the car. Okay. Let's just get to a slightly more open area. Better yet, let's just go to the light room. And, uh... Trap the car! <laughs> Why not? Fah. Hmm. 
Possibly another Yiga spy fellow over there, but eh, we can check that out next time. Well, viewers, uh, I believe we've reached the end of the episode, so thank you very much for watching Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Again, fairly productive, in my opinion. I, uh, let's see, took out a couple Yiga encampments. And, uh, well, I don't really have a plan for next, but, uh, oh, that looks like it might be another Yiga encampment, actually. Yeah, I'll go take care of that. It's pretty far away, but hey, I have a car. At least I will have a car once I get it off this blasted, uh shelf. So anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.